Hello, it's the day after Christmas and it's early in the morning, so I decided to record yet another screencast. When we left off at our last screencast, we wrote this new scenario, name is required when checking out, and it reads like this. When I attempt to check out, leaving the name filled blank, then I should see the error message, name can't be blank. And let's go ahead and run that real quickly, just to make sure that everything is still working fine. And it is very good. So th what I want to focus on this time is this last step that I should see the error message name can't be blank. And let's go ahead and take a look at the step definition for that. Here you see I've got current page error messages should include message. The part I want to focus on is the should include. This is what's called an RSpec matcher and I use them in my cucumber scenarios to do all to specify all of my expectations and what i want to go over in this session is writing your own now this is not something that i do all of the time but occasionally i do find that it is very helpful to increase the expressiveness of my scenarios or of my step definitions if i do write my own rspec matcher and they're really easy to do so we're going to go ahead and do one right now and let's get started. I'm going to create a new file in my support directory and I'm just going to call it matchers and here we have it. So I'm going to write an RSpec matcher to replace that error messages should include and let's get started with that. And I'm going, I want to be able to say that my page should have an error message. So I'm going to name my RSpec matcher have error message. And this is also takes a block and the parameter that is passed to the block is what you expect which is what is actually to the right of the matcher. So if you think of the one we have should include message, it would be message, which is to the right of the include matcher. So in this case, I'm going to actually name this message. And inside of my RSpec matcher, all I have to do is call a, another method, which is called match. And it takes a block and to that block is passed the thing that is to the left of the matcher. And if you think about it, we want to say that our page should include the error message. So we're going to ha have this be our actual page. And inside of this block, all we have to do is write the code that would return true if it succeeds or false if it does not. So here's what we need to do. Okay, and there you have it. This RSpec matcher will work as it is right now. Why don't we go back to our step definitions and actually use this? So we want to say current page should and instead of include we want to say have error message and let's run that and see what happens and as you see it works very nicely very nicely but let's take a look at what happens when it fails. In this case, I'm going to change my message. Name can't be a banana. And let's run it and see what happens. And we got a fail. Expected checkout page at browser, blah, blah, blah. Well, that message is not very nice. 
But luckily for us, there's an easy way to handle that. We can actually write blocks here that will return the message that we want to do. And all we need to do here is just return a string that is the error message that we want to have. Okay, let's run it again and see what message we get when it fails. Okay, this time it says expected name can't be blank to include name can't be a banana. Much nicer, far more expressive. So let's go back and change this back. The other error message though is sometimes we can use should not in our messages or in our expectations. So if I would run this again, we're going to get a bad error message or something that's not easy to discern. And so once again, what we need to do here is fill in one more block. So in this case, if we were to run it, we get expected name can't be blank to not include name can't be blank. So let's change our step definition back, run it one last time to see it work. Excellent. That's all I had. Again, our spec matchers are something that you might want to use. I don't think they should be overused, though. I have seen cases where there are dozens of these, and it was not a nice thing. I think if uh, a project of, of sizable nature, you might want to see five to ten or so of these. Just if you find a case where your expectation is a little complex or it doesn't read real well, this is your go-to tool. And that's all I have for this screencast. Hope you enjoy it.